Hey guys, welcome back to FTB Revelation. And since we last left off, I haven't really done too much since we got back from the village. Um, I actually went ahead and made a different type of watering can from thermal cultivation. And I'm gonna say right now, these are a lot better than the other ones from Extra Utilities. So um, I went ahead and made the Invar one as the next version up requires Fido Grow which I actually don't have any. I might be able to grab some if I can get some niter, maybe some slag it looks like. Um, but currently, as it says, I don't have any. But the nice thing about these, even so, they have their pluses and their downsides. This one actually irrigates a 5x5 five five area, which we can adjust with the V hotkey. Um, but pretty nice. Let's go ahead and head down. I actually went ahead and set up a, a, a new area for a nice... Um, sugarcane area as you can see here and the way you actually fill up these watering cans is you have to hold shift and I recommend doing it on an infinite water source so make sure you have two blocks on either side or a uh, two by two and do it in the one corner and that'll fill it up um, you're going to have to do it a few times it's already getting dark but watch and see how quickly things actually start to grow. Look at this. Look at that. And then if we do it on the uh, the middle layer and we come back through here. Come on. That wasn't a very good, very good run through on that one. I've actually had better results, but these actually work pretty darn well. I mean, look at that. Look how quickly that sugar cane's growing. Imagine growing other things like crops and just everything. I mean, this is pretty darn good. And I've been using this to practically grow a good chunk of sugar cane. Uh, mainly for, well, what we're going to be getting into today. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go and sleep through the night real quick. I'm very sad about that coffee pot from last episode. We'll have to try to maybe make a nice coffee pot for our uh, mess hall very soon. Right, so let's go ahead and pick up our sugar cane. Now, eventually, I'll uh, see about maybe making a bigger and better one and see what we can do about maybe using it for growing some of our crops quickly enough. We might be able to find a, a nice little easy way to get a few things done maybe a little quicker and maybe even getting some uh, really good stuff. All right, so we got a whole ton of sugar cane. And uh, what I'm going to plan on doing, do we have a mod called Bibliocraft? We actually do. Look at that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and I remember correctly, if we grab ourselves one of these seats here, um, we might be able to have a little bit of fun with them. So we're going to go ahead and maybe look at maybe making some oak ones. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to need some more string, which can be easily obtained by, uh, well, some hemp from our hemp farm. So we're gonna head down real quick. We're gonna grab a few things. We're gonna get a little extra water going. And maybe see about growing some uh, little extra amounts of hemp. We can get some more string and make some more wool. Now having a wool farm definitely would probably work a lot better for us. But look at that, look at this. Look how awesome that works. It grows pretty darn quick. There we go. Like it almost it, it, it's almost instant. Like in some cases it's almost instant. Like I said though, the downside is is that it it goes through water kind of quick, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's kind of a well, it's all right. And that was a mistake, but there we go. Easily fixed. All right, let's head back up. Boing! Gotta love that slime sling. I think it's so useful, I tell you. All right, so with a little extra hemp, we're gonna see if we can maybe grab some of this, some of our fiber. See if we can make a little bit of wool. We're gonna try to go ahead and make a couple of these oak seats. Now we're gonna need some wooden pressure plates, which require a few of these. And boom, there we go. There's one. Can we not craft more? 
What are we missing? We're missing sticks. Okay, that's understandable. All right, let's grab a few of those, like so. Get a few more seats made. Um, we're going to try to make our area look a little bit nicer probably in the near future, but for now, like I said, we're just kind of going with the flow. All right, there we go. So you can see we got a good chunk of sugar cane already, and we're going to go ahead and head down into the lab for the time being. And the cool thing is, I've noticed this, and this isn't because of the long fall boots, but as the elevator's going down, and I'm actually going to go ahead and do this real quick. What? What? Whoa, buddy! Okay, that was a little bit of a glitch. Okay, why don't you come back down here? <laughs> that was that, that that wasn't right. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys something real quick. I'm going to take off my long vol boots. We're going to head back up to floor number two real quick. And this is just something, like I said, I noticed while I was uh, just kind of messing around. I was kind of curious about something. So if we go ahead and stand here, let that thing finish, take off our long vol boots, and we fall down here, we take no fall damage while hitting it. <laughs> so we can actually get down a little bit faster. That's pretty cool. That's not too bad. So we're gonna try to set up our um, mess hall area and our dining area here in this area. So I'm gonna do this and we'll do that. And we're gonna go ahead and see if we can actually get one of these villagers. I don't know if we can make them sit. I think I think we have to do something else like maybe get them on, um, I think we have to make a desk maybe. But being down here is not the worst thing. At least we can maybe see about getting them a nice little place to chill out but um because i don't really want them to go down here i don't want them to go over in there so we're gonna have to make a nice secure area where they uh can pretty much just kind of hang around down here but for the time being maybe we'll just grab a few blocks and close things off like so um, I don't know how well they'll be able... I mean, if they go in there, that's fine. I don't I don't really see an issue with that. I'm just going to go ahead and close this off. There's nothing for them to really do down there. But um, they shouldn't despawn. I'm just a little bit more worried about um, mobs coming through from up here. So we might go ahead and grab a little glass and see about just sealing it off for the time being. Just kind of quickly like... Um, we'll try to make it look a little nice by making some nicer looking glass, maybe some ornate steel. And let's go ahead and jump into hover mode real quick like, find us a nice area where everything is pretty level. So I'm going to say right about here. And let's grab our wand. Ouch. Oh, that's a sad face. That is indeed a very, very sad face. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it off with this. Because I don't have any really... I don't really have much more glass to really use right now. And I just want to make sure the villagers are safe. So we're just going to go ahead and close this off with some extra blocks. Which we'll clean up a little bit later. I'll try to get some more sand off camera. But uh, for now, we'll just do this as just kind of a temporary fix. And that way we still get some of the, uh, the light down here. Into our mess hall area. Now this actually doesn't look too bad. Might have to... You're always doing something like that. Sometimes they kind of yield more ideas, and that's kind of cool. So, um, not him. I believe it is this guy over here that we're wanting to talk to. Ooh, no, not that one. It's actually this one. And we're going to need a crafting table, which we do have. We're going to go ahead and set him up right there. We're going to make a whole buttload of paper. We're going to go ahead and leave, leave a little bit for now. But uh, we're going to do some trading with this guy. Give him some paper. What a deal. Look at that. What a deal. And we're going to try to get as many of the emeralds as we can from him with all of the paper that we have. So it looks like uh, we got about five. That should also inspire him to want to trade more with us and other things. And I will not be making that trade. But maybe... If I get enough emeralds, I will, so that way we can see about uh, getting to the next tier. Oh, wait, never mind. We can't. Oh, it opens up everything almost. 
<gasps> books for one emerald. Ten books for one emerald? That is definitely not worth it. You, sir, are a thief and a scam artist. Now, some of these other guys, sometimes they'll have some pretty good deals. Um, the cleric here, not too bad with 36 right, flesh, which we don't really have any at the moment. And this guy's actually kind of cool, because he gives us honeycombs, simmering combs, and mellow combs just from food trades. And that's not too bad. We can actually do that. Uh, this guy, oh, okay, cool. So we can do void crystals, redstonia crystals, and, and nori crystals. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to want to trade anything unless we have the void crystals, which we could do, but eh, not really. Not really worth the time. So let's go ahead and head back up. We're going to start maybe looking at moving some stuff down into our lab today. Um, I got some emeralds now, and we should be able to start crafting ourselves up some better sources and... Um, well, we'll say power cells <laughs> for short, uh, so we can store more power and everything. So now we have the ability to make our power cells, these normal ones, instead of the simple ones that we have been making. So we need our machine frames, we need some blocks for it, so we're also going to need some prismarine shards, which is pretty easy to achieve. We just need some nether quartz with our atomic reconstructor. All right, so we're going to have to reset this guy up. Let's go ahead and pick up our alloy furnace, because we're probably going to be moving everything more or less here very soon anyway. But uh, we're going to grab eight of our nether quartz, toss them down in front of our atomic reconstructor, and boom! There we go. Some prismarine. Now, I wonder where they go, and you have your mining backpack on you. It's more than likely they went inside there. Uh, we're also going to need some blocks of redstone, and let's go ahead and also go ahead and put away our golden lassos. We don't really need those anymore at the moment. We might go ahead out and grab some more of those a little later on, but for now, we should be fine. So there we go. We got everything we need. We need two diamonds, so I'm going to grab two of those. We're also going to need our machine frames, which I don't know. Did I make some extras of those? want to make sure that I didn't. Okay. Oh, and I still have some extra sugar cane, which is kind of nice. I'm going to grab that. Leave half a stack up here in case I need it. Um, I'm probably going to convert that into sugar real quick and probably toss that into the fridge in the mess hall. It's always good to have a little bit of sugar laying around. Alright, so we need a machine frame. We're going to need some lapis, some iron, and gold nuggets. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, three. Okay. We're going to need a little bit of lapis. Good thing we mined a little bit of that. And there we go. Two machine frames and now two actual good power cells. These are actually double the size of what we currently have, which is wonderful. So that should increase our network even more so. We can actually keep the ones we currently have. So, yeah, maybe we will. Um, in the meantime, I guess we'll probably need to make a little bit more paper and make some more of these. Power cell cards. So we're gonna need one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and eight of those. So if we want to go ahead and keep the ones we currently have, it should still connect and uh, stay on the same network as long as we use these cards here and link them to the ones that we currently have set up. We're gonna go ahead and start maybe picking up some of our machines and taking the ones that we already made, namely the ones of nuclear craft. So we got a coal generator. We got our reactor casings, we got the crusher, compacting drawer, there's our isotope separator, redstone furnace. Um, what else do we have? I know I got more of those machines somewhere. Where are they? Did I move? Oh. Well, there's the alloy furnace. I guess I guess that's it, right? Yeah, I guess so. All right, now as far as this whole setup's concerned, I'll probably go ahead and leave the majority of this here for the moment, because we'll probably, once we get a little further into everything, um, probably see about doing a different method of processing our ores, maybe something a little bit faster, something that we can make faster at least, and still yield us a lot of extra goodies, so... We'll just kind of leave that as is for now. I want to make sure we don't miss anything. 
Oh, yeah, I didn't even show you guys. Um, I don't think I did, but um, I did do a little bit of work off camera and uh, got our mining area set up for an elevator. So I'm going to show you guys that real quick. We got our elevator here. We got four different floors now. Um, I believe I have it set up to where I believe four is the bottom. Two, de two. Uh, I don't have to redo these because two takes us to the second lowest floor. Three takes us up to the second highest floor here, which I've done a little bit of mining for tin and copper, which I think we can do on that other floor too. Um, and then four will take us all the way down to the bottom. So, there we go. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We got our zombie spawner, which we can actually make some use out of. So, we can get some more emeralds from that one guy. That's not a bad idea. Might have to do that soon. So, pretty cool. Not too shabby looking. I think it looks kind of nice. Like scaffolding in the corners and the uh, caution tape on the sides. Kind of gives it a pretty nice feel in the uh, mine down there. Like it, and I like it, and I like it a lot. All right, so let's go ahead and head down into the lab. We'll start setting up a few things. I think we should be able to start moving some stuff around. We might also actually, before we do, um, while we're up here actually, let's make a few things. I want to go ahead and make some, let's make some flux ducts from thermal expansion. Um, just because I do like these. And I would love to upgrade to the cryo stabilized flux duct. Something I've not really done in any of my series, but eventually I would really like to get to that point. So let's grab some of those. Um, I believe we're going to need some glass and a little bit of redstone. And these little guys, just the regular flux duct, uh, leadstone flux ducts, that is. Uh, they transfer 1,000 RF per tick, which is. Still more than what we currently own, so... Eh, do I probably want more than that. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's grab a little bit more glass. Oh, I was using blank stained glass. My bad. I want to make sure I have enough. Uh, 36. Do I have any extras? Did I make any extras? I mean, I guess I have a few. All right. Let's go ahead and head down. Might be enough. If not, we'll uh, we'll come back up and craft a few more. No big deal. So now we got these wonderful, better power cells from RF Tools. I love these things. They have uh, done an amazing job with just the simple ones at the moment. These guys seem to be enjoying their time down here. And I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up, because right here is where I'm going to be planning on setting up my main storage um, eventually for everything. And these cubby holes here are going to each house different things. Now, maybe like right here, we might go ahead and set up our redstone furnace. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and set one up right there. Because eventually I'm probably going to put something there and there. And I'll probably put one there as well. Or something there. So we got our induction smelter there. Um, we might actually make a few of those machines if we have time. We'll see. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and pop down real quick our power cell right here. It's going to clear a few blocks out so we can actually see in the back. Place our power cell down. Store all of the power. That's right. That is right. So we put our link card in there. We can see now we have 1.5 million RF being able to be stored. And this is actually gaining power from our reactor currently, which isn't on. It's just transferring the stored power that's within it. As you can see, it now stopped. So pretty cool. Um, we have another one, which I might actually go ahead and, I don't know, I might put it on the reactor and pull the other one off, put it somewhere else. But uh, let's go ahead and start doing a little bit of wiring here. We're going to go ahead and uh, pull this up here. And just to kind of make things look a little bit nicer, let's kind of run this up into the uh, the ceiling a little bit, shall we? So if we put a machine there, that'll connect there perfectly. That one will connect there like so. Um, the problem is, is if we want to extract out of these now, do we have any sort of, I always want to type in duck. I don't know why I want to type in duck. <laughs> I believe there's some um, type of ducks from Thermal Dynamics. 
I think that transfers power and items? Transfers items and redstone flux. Okay. So eventually, these are the things that we're going to want to make, unless we can actually make them now. I swear, it sounds like they're right here. <laughs> Alright, so transfers items. Let's make sure there's no other ones. Transfers fluids. Uh, fluids and redstone flux, which is kind of nice. Okay, cool. So I'm guessing we start off right around here. So we got Signalum and Signalum Plated. And these require just item ducts with a little Signalum and Electrum. No, that's not too bad. We might be able to actually make some of those. It's not really something I've done a lot of in the past. And uh, to be fair, these would probably work perfectly for what I'm planning on doing. Items travel more rapidly. These are the impulse ones. Requires Electrum, Signalum, and Impulse Item Ducts, which is, I believe, Lumium infilled or hardened glass. No, those are still. Hmm. Ah, yeah. Energized, actually, glowstone inside of an item duct on a fluid transposer so we might have to go ahead and take a look about maybe making one of those very soon oh hey little guy no wonder why so let's go ahead and start um if anything we're just going to go ahead and try to get a little bit of this set up back here we might go ahead and maybe look at making some of those so if we take a look yep this is go ahead and powered our redstone furnace but this is also not set to out there we go so now it's set to out everything should be powered now i think a little bit of power is going to be transferred into our flex ducts so every time we place one down it kind of has a little bit more of a internal buffer bringing this down a little bit more so we notice it's a little bit lower now cool yeah, let's go make up a few things. Let's go see if we can maybe uh, make some of those impulse or... What are those? Not the... Im yeah, not the impulse ones. At least maybe one of these um, signal plated ones at least. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to the impulse ones just yet. Because we need to make a fluid transposer. I don't know if we can actually alter between the both. But that would be kind of cool. We might be able to upgrade them. I'm not sure. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. We got the impulse signalum plated. So I want to see, actually, we should be able to make signalum. Um, we can do it in the adduction smelter, arc first casting, or the ingot former. Oh, really? Well, that's kind of cool. So we do have an induction smelter ready to go. We have some copper. We have silver. We need some destabilized redstone. In order to get that, though, we need a magma crucible. So let's go ahead and see what we needed to go ahead. Maybe we'll go ahead and make the magma crucible as well as um, a fluid transposer real quick. So we can start getting a few things set up and ready. All right, cool. All right, so I already got some nether bricks ready to go. Let's go ahead and uh, craft these into the actual nether brick themselves. We're going to need one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's grab a stack of you. One, two. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. And we got a little bit of redstone. So that should just about be everything we need to go ahead and start crafting some of these. We need a little electrum, unfortunately, actually. Let's grab that. We need that for our redstone conductance coil. Let's not use all of our electrum up on that. And we also need a reception coil, so we'll make up... I think we're going to make two of those, because I do believe we're going to need one for the other one as well. We're going to need to make ourselves a machine frame with our ten gears. So we're going to make two of those because we're gonna need two machine frames so we need a little bit more glass we'll grab eight of those while we're here bam and we're gonna need two copper gears at least on the magma crucible so there we go magma crucible again and let's go ahead and take a look at what we need for our fluid transposer because these are going to be a pretty big deal for um, setting us up on some other stuff eventually. Not just our cryostabilized ducts or making signalum. These are going to be pretty good for uh, a numerous amounts of other things. So, oh, we need a little bit more glass. What do you know? 
Then we should be able to go ahead and make our fluid transposer. <laughs> Lovely. All right, let's go ahead and put some of these extra items away we will not need. Um, I do believe we're going to go ahead and take this power cell. We're going to jump this one onto our reactor over here. Let's go ahead and take this one and pick him up. And go ahead and put our link card inside and in. There we go. And that does bring us up, even though we have picked up our other power cell, because that one's still actually currently linked. We can actually take that one with us and, you know, bring it along if we need to charge up any of the, like, items that we might have that use power or anything. So, currently we don't really have anything that uses power, um, which actually kind of brings me to the other idea, actually. Um, a little curious, I guess. Flux infused shield. Flux infused quiver. What? Yeah, I remember from Redstone Arsenal there used to be a jet pack add-on as well, but it doesn't look like there is actually any um, jet pack on any of these, which is a little unfortunate because I do like this armor. It's really nice, but I don't know. We'll have to. Take a look see at that a little bit later on. Now, eventually, we need to see if what we were wanting to make. We were wanting to make signalum, so we need some redstone. We're going to get a little bit of our redstone. In fact, let's just do a good, cool stack of that. In the meantime, um, let's grab some copper. Toss this into our crusher there head down into our lab. We're going to be doing this, like I said, a little slow. It's not going to be all at one time, but we're going to be getting it set up very, very, very soon. As you can tell, we're already getting machines set up. we got power down here now. These guys seem to be fairly happy about it. And we're going to go ahead and place our fluid transposer and our magma crucible down there. Let's head down into the back and go ahead and get those guys wired up and at least set up with some power. Which should be pretty simple. Boop, 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 boop. Wonderful. So toss inside of our Magma Crucible our redstone. And if we want to get this transferred over, we could have just placed them right next to each other. But for aesthetics and probably some people's OCD, <laughs> I kind of spaced them apart because it probably looks better on the outside. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a few other things in order to make sure that it looks nice. And we can get the fluids transferred over accordingly now we're also going to want to probably make sure that if we want things to transfer over or don't we'll try to set up a way in order to do that real quick and then once we get that taken care of we'll see about maybe making a little bit of signal and uh we'll see about maybe getting some of those other things taken care of so first things first let's go ahead and grab a lever and we're also going to go ahead and make ourselves a fluid duct All right, now which kind do we want to make? I guess we'll just make this one. This one will break if its contents are extremely hot or cold. A uh, hardened one may vary in temperature. So we need Invar and any type of hardened glass, which I do believe we have a little extra hardened glass, I think. Did I make hardened glass? I guess I didn't. Well then. Well, I do believe hardened glass requires a little bit of pulverized obsidian, which we do have, and a little bit of lead, so we'll grab some of that. Here's our pulverized copper, and let's go ahead and get a little bit of our tin. We'll grab eight of those guys and toss those inside of there for the time being. Let's head back up into the lab. Today's episode might just run a little bit longer than I want it to, but uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get this set up. Um, probably not going to make those ducks today, but we'll see about trying to at least get the signal made. That'd be a nice little plus for other things as well. Alright, so we got that. We need to grab our induction smelter. I believe we need this. Unlock that slot and place our pulverized obsidian inside. Let's go take a look at our power at the moment. Ooh. Yeah, that's draining pretty quick. 
Luckily enough, we do probably still make enough power to not have to worry about that. As long as it's on, at least. So there we go, a little bit of hardened glass making its way in. The stabilized redstone still doing its job. Cool stuff. So let's head back up. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I can get up here a little bit faster than the elevator. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and save a little bit of time and just leave it up there at the top. In the meantime, let's also go ahead and turn this on. We can monitor our power consumption. And it looks like, indeed, we are now gaining power more or less than losing it, which is wonderful. All right, so hardened fluid duct. We got our hardened glass. We need a little bit of invar, which, eh, unfortunately... Not gonna be too hard to make. I believe it's a. Actually, I can't remember. Just grab eight. We'll toss this inside of here. Got a little bit of bronze I was making up. I believe it's a one to three, if I remember correctly. We'll take a look at that real quick. Always forget, because there's so many different kinds. It's like you have aluminum brass, you have bronze, and each thing is a little different in every case so uh one two three looks like cool all right so let's make some of those fluid ducts up and there's also going to be one more thing i'm going to go ahead and make if i can let's type in at thermal i believe we can actually try to make things look a little bit nicer and do we have the platings Maybe not in this version. So we might have to deal with that. Unless I make the better ones. Oops. And we can connect them to the others. That's a very definite possibility. Might have to try that. All right, two, three, one, two, three. We're gonna make a few extra buckets real quick. Head back down into the lab. Wee! <laughs> I still love the elevators, even though I can fly and I don't take fall damage anymore. I still love them. They're just very aesthetically pleasing, we'll say. All right, so we're going to go ahead and toss in our buckets um, into our fluid transposer. For now, we're going to go ahead and do that. This, if we can go ahead and do this, we will go ahead and start accepting the fluid from our magma crucible. We'll get our disabled redstone buckets out, and we should be able to go ahead and craft a little bit of a signalum blend. Oh, we need silver, not tin. Oh my gosh, I am so dumb. I don't know why I was thinking tin. I think tin because I think you use tin in Enderium. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's so many things and I get them all confused. Two, three, four. Oh crap, I didn't mean to take it out. Oh crap. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Toss that into you real quick. All right, so once we get our signalum, we are actually get our signal and blend what can we do with that we can go ahead and toss it into just a furnace molten signalum induction smelter gives us a little bit of sand gives us our signal and blend and some slag which actually isn't a bad thing I don't mind doing that because Always like having a little slag, especially if we can use that for um, other means, like um, making Fido grow. That's kind of nice. So apologies, guys. Today's episode might run a little long, but we're almost done. Um, so what I'm going to go and do, guys, is finish making up this signalum. I'm going to go ahead and start saying thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of FTB Revelation. If you guys did, be sure to hit that like button really helps me out plus it lets me know you guys are enjoying the series and if you guys really enjoyed it be sure to hit that subscribe button that little bell notification next to it it'll notify you guys when i post a new video oh man look at that speed 
Well, that's nice. There's some slang. And if you guys have any helpful tips, tricks, or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. And until next episode, we'll see you guys then. Goodbye.